Welcome back, Guardian. So I feel like in year three, they're probably going to bring back a lot of the year one weapons with random rolls, kind of like they did with Forsaken, where you could get Aaron Tail, any of D, things like that. I wanted to go over some top fusion rifles that I think would shine once random rolls are brought in, but as of right now, they're kind of shit. But Aletha FR4, starting off with number one, projection fuse, enhanced battery, and it has the field prep option. The difference between this type fusion and the Aaron Tail type fusions is really just the scope options. It's a really good fusion. It needs that random roll. I do like the auto loading and the rampage combo on any fusion rifle, but I actually kind of was turned on to the field prep option with this as well. You get more ammo and reserves and you can do that crouching reload that's pretty sick on the run, especially with the slow firing fusion like Aletha and the Aaron Tail, some of the slowest reloading fusions in the game. So to have that option is pretty dope. That's why I always go with the auto load or the field prep as of now. But if that changes, I'll let you know. But I just think those are the two most beast options. The damage on this is sick. It still gets the double damage for crit shot. Same as the timeline vertex and other fusions on strikes. But only to red bar adds. So if you do it to an orange or yellow bar, you won't get that double damage. But having double damage with the fusion of this, you know, caliber or this damage type. It's not that great at on the fly shots like that. But if you get them kind of lined up, it's beast. The damage really isn't needed. It's one of those fusions, it's more of a support roll weapon than anything. You can get a lot of good range out of it and do damage so you don't have as much fall off as you would on like a timeline vertex. And the charge rate will sometimes get your kills stolen from you, such as this situation. But that's it for the Aletha. Number two, I talk about this gun all the time. Timeline vertex, same options. If I can get rampage, auto loading holster, field prep, high impact reserves, rampage, you know, anything. I don't know what the options are going to be when they bring them back. This will be a faction rally weapon from future war cult. This is how you'll be able to farm it. But this is just one of those guns that perfect charge rate to keep running and gunning. That's why I wield it all the time over every other energy weapon in the entire game right now. It doesn't need random rolls. It's good the way it is. You can strategize with it well. It's just one of those keep going weapons and it has the perfect aim accuracy and charge rate and air agility. Everything about it is just super on point. You can even shoot through chaos such as this and still do those accidental lucky shots that are beasts to have. The next fusions I highly doubt Bungie brings back because they're pretty much the same fusion rifle just with different names and different perks. It's kind of a stupid way for them to do it but Nox Veneris and Nox Echo same fusion, different perk options, different scope options. So I don't think they're going to bring both of them back, but they might bring Nox back or they might bring the Echo back. I can see them bringing the Echo back just because it has more scope options than the Veneris did, which means it got more attention that way. So that's probably the one they're going to end up bringing back. I don't recommend the flip scope on it. I think that it just doesn't have that much range and it has a good movement. It's really good 660 fusion. It's better than Tetchen in my opinion. And I think people sleep on this fusion quite a bit. But this scope option is not the one I recommend. I always recommend going that very bottom one, the Red Dot 2 MOA. I'll be doing gameplay with the Nox Echo because the other one just has auto loading holster, which you know what that is. So I wanted to kind of show you the hit fire accuracy and just the on the fly kind of stabbing that it has. That's kind of what I call it, stabbing your shots because you charge it and then kind of just stab it in a general direction. This scope makes it perform better than the other one. And you gotta warm up to this gun for like 30 minutes. I tell people to use it all the time, but I don't know if they ever use it long enough to really get the feel of this weapon because of how it sounds and the way that the recoil pattern kind of is. For a 660 though, you really can't beat the Nox Echo or Veneris, whichever one you choose to do. I'll show you the hip fire right here on this big old Mario 3 looking dude, super big world. Kind of just stays together. And then the air accuracy on it is also the same, really good. Stays all together. So if you just get the right perk option with this, rampage, auto loading, whatever you want to do, this gun does the job and it does it pretty well. Those of you loaded question fans, if you're a huge fan of that gun, you're probably going to really like this next option, especially when you get the right random roll with it. And that is the Conjecture TSC field prep projection fuse to give it a little more range, red dot two scope on it. It's kind of the same thing as loaded question but you get a little more range and it's not master worked. But the fact that you can get more options with it in the future, there's the reload with the field prep. And then without it, you have that slow loaded question type feel to it. This weapon does fly though. It's, I was actually kind of shocked at how well it shot from the air like that when you're kind of landing in on your zone and then just, you know, moving target to target. The damage type on it is beast. I mean, if it had rampage on it or kill clip or whatever, any kind of buff option like that and accuracy options like threat detector, 
I think a lot more people would use this overloaded question just because the reservoir burst doesn't proc as often as people like to admit. I don't think that it comes in handy when it is proc. That's just like my take on it. Every time I've tried to use it, one out of like 20 shots will be useful with the the reservoir burst, you know. I'm not saying that it won't proc, but when it procs, it really wasn't even needed or maybe it doesn't have enemies standing beside other enemies to where the explosion really mattered, you know. But conjecture is not really that bad at all, especially in situations like this. So you get some blackout thrall, throw that clip in real fast with the field prep reload or the auto loading rampage, whichever one. And then when it comes to like boss damage or yellow bar damage, I mean two shots, they're done. But the boss DPS on it, some bosses you can get double damage to proc and some don't, but this boss does. So you can hit 9,000 to the head, 4,000 to the body, or 4,500 to the body. But with the range fall off on it, it's still 6,700 to crit and then 3,000 to body. So I think if you couple this with the right set of perks and you're the loaded question type user, you might appreciate this one a lot more than loaded question. Next up isn't a fusion that I really recommend, but I feel like people would probably ask me about it. What about Cartesian Coordinate? It's okay, but I don't think it's that great, to be honest. I feel like I'm just wasting a lot of ammo when I'm with Cartesian Coordinate. I just don't think that it's that reliable of a weapon to be running and gunning with, especially if you have a Cartesian Coordinate. Trying to hit that is a range shot. I test that shot with a lot of fusions and some will hit it some won't and cartesian coordinate just will not be good on the fly it just doesn't have that kind of handling with it but with random rolls anything is possible i guess so i just kind of included it but i think if you have a proleum fr3 it's just a way better option over the coordinate even with random rolls i don't see coordinate being better than proleum and finally we have the shock and awe I love shock and awe, but I don't love backup plan. The reason that I don't like backup plan is because I like to do sweep shots, and when I pull that fusion out and try to sweep it, it fires right away, and it's too sporadic and kind of just screws my whole strategy up when it came to the shot that I intended to do. Backup plan just kind of gets in the way. I wish you could just kind of like double pump the trigger to proc the backup plan instead of it automatically procking for you. I get its purpose. I see how some people would like it and where it can come in handy. But at the same time, I don't like it and I wish that I had different options with it. But if you need a good void fusion rifle and you don't have a void in timeline like I kept mine from year one, I think shock and all has got real potential to be competitive against timeline vertex. It just needs the right type roll with it. But those are my top choices for the arc solar and void year one fusions that have currently not been brought back that I feel like they probably are going to bring back based on history. It's going to be a repeat of forsaken with just a handful of year one weapons mixed in with whatever they got in mind for the year three type archetypes but that's just my thought bros y'all take it easy i'm gonna let it ride out and play this beast song from the whisper heroic which is the only reason that i even did this just to hear that song y'all take it easy man and i'll catch y'all next time in space